Now we also have our octave button. Turn my arpeggiator off here. So obviously we can go down by octaves by pressing this one button here. It extends the length of our keyboard. And it's really cool. Helps you to keep within a range that you're trying to use in any particular song. Next, I want to talk about our pitch bend wheel. We can bend that pitch. I can play a sound, bend it up, or down. That's really cool. Now, the pitch bend wheel transmits MIDI pitch bend information on a selected MIDI channel and port. So that means it sends this information out and of course it'll trigger that in your DAW, your digital audio workstation, or even on your module or your keyboard. You can send the data out to. Remember that. And we also have here our modulation wheel. Now this wheel can be used to transmit continuous controller data. Now watch this. See that? Okay. And this is set by default. The modulation wheel will transmit MIDI CC01. So remember that. When you're transmitting this, this is 01. Okay, next I want to get into display and explain how display works. Here on top, as you can see here, we're in a preset. And this is our Reasons preset, and it's preset 2, which is how all the MPKs are shipped, of course. There are presets in there. And uh, as I told you before, we can press preset. We can change the preset. We have up to uh, 30 different presets here that we have in our MPK 61 and MPK 88. First one being like live. Then we got Reasons. Then we have Cubase. We have Sonar. We have... Uh, FL Studio, we've got application applied acid, um, Atura, I press it down, see what happens? It brings it up. So I can turn the knob, press it down, it loads it. Turn the knob, no matter reasons, I'll press the button down and it loads it in. Now once it loads it in, we got to sit right there, I hit a keyboard note, you'll notice at the bottom here we have our octave and our transpose. Now the octave setting will apply to individual presets. So for example, I press a keyboard pad there, and that's for that particular preset. Now the other keyboard sound I bring up won't have this on it. I have to change octave for that one. So, obviously. Now, but when I go to transpose, we're in transpose, and we're here and we go to transpose. Let's save it actually. Now here we are in octave. Now if we are here in transpose, what happens in transpose is a global command. So it happens to the entire instrument when we go to transpose. So that means if I turn the transposition, every sound that's being played or every sound that I'm going to ever play will be transposed up or down according to the setting right here for transposition. If I hit a pad, let me hit a pad here. You'll notice here we have pad information now. Now we're going to see, for one, we're going to see the MIDI port channel. That's 1A. That's pad bank A. See that there? So we're going to go to MIDI channel. Port channel is 1A. Our MIDI note is going to be MIDI note number 39. That's our MIDI note. Got that? And this is our note indicator. Indicate this is a note. Right here, this is our note number. See that right there? Note number. Right here is our velocity. Here's our note number. Here's our velocity. The velocity at which how hard that note's hit. Hit it real hard or soft, either way. Okay, and here's from the data. This data being sent. See that? I hold it down. That's the data that's being sent out. I lift it up. Well, then it's being sent out right now. So it's a continuous, monitored data. That's what this is. It's zero zero now. I press the pad down. Now it's sending out one twenty seven right here is our aftertouch. 
So when that's enabled, and I hit it, that's after I touch it, it tells me, well, hey, this was this is being sent. It's the data that you actually put in. So I'm holding the pad down slightly now. Not much, but it's still sending data. See, I'm not holding the pad down much, but the more I keep my hand on the pad, it's still sending data. So I lift my hand up lightly, up or down slowly. I'll put it right here. And I'm still triggering that sound and still sending data. I'm going to turn a knob. And now I turn the knob here, we have a different setting. This is our control chain setting. Now, when I turn the knob or I move a fader, which I move the fader or I hit a button somewhere here, these buttons, I check this knob here, this information comes up right here. Now, what we have here, first of all, of course, is our MIDI port and channel number. That's MIDI 1A. Got that? Next, we have our controller. This is our control change indicator, right? And here's our control change indicator right here. Now, this is the controller that I'm controlling, whatever this is set for. Now, I turn the data wheel on, the, on this knob here, turn this knob here, you'll notice that it says controller 2. See? Control. I'm hitting knob number 1. I'm turning knob 1. That says 2. So it's whatever 2 corresponds to in a particular DAW, which is our digital audio workstation, or in my sound module, I'm controlling that parameter. And here is the amount of data that's being sent. This is 100. See that? And that's the control change value. Up or down right there. And this is for a knob. It could be for a fader as well. See, I moved this first fader. Now it says the control is 12. And I can go up and down with this fader here. See that? And that's my control change changing. Right there. And as I move this fader up and down, the value is also displayed with a bar meter right here. See the bar meter right there? So I can move up and down. We can see in a little bar meter. It's, oh, what? There's data going in there. In and out. See that? And we could see this data as it fluctuates right here. If I turn my knob or move my fader up and down. We can also have our knobs as well as our pads transmit aftertouch. The knobs and the faders or MPK can transmit this information and we can set this as well. We could also have MIDI machine control command sent. Now, MIDI machine control is sent to control a particular software, say a digital audio workstation software like Sonar, Cubase, Reasons, Go Live Lite. So in this case, I have my play, stop, fast forward, record buttons. I'll press the stop button and you'll see it sent an MMC stop, MIDI machine control stop. Now earlier I actually played a sequence using that. I just want you to see what it looks like here on the screen, on the monitor right here. Before we start going to our computer so you can see how the virtual MPK looks on the computer screen, be much easier to teach you that way. So here, for example, I can press play, and it's play. When I press stop, and it stops. Here I can go back. So I'm pressing the back button. I can go forward. Press the forward button. And press my stop button. That's MIDI machine control.